Crime Time 3.0. What's up, my peoples? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Takara MP44 Masterpiece Optimus Prime version 3.0. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. It's a very large box. So right up front here, we have Prime, Truck Mode, Robot Mode, Convoy 3.0, because that's what they call him in Japan, Cybertron Commander. On this side of the box, we have Prime on the other side the box we have Prime on the top, Masterpiece on the bottom, a rundown of what's in the box, words and stuff and things that I cannot read. On the back of the box you have your obligatory product shots, more stuff, more things, more things, more stuff, lots of stuff and things that we're all going to go through. And that's basically it for the packaging. Also included is the collector's card, it's Optimus Prime pointing to freedom. And Convoy version 3.0 on the back. You have words and things and stuff that I cannot read. Tech specs, if that interests you, hooray for carts. And moving right along, here we have Masterpiece Optimus Prime, the third incarnation of Masterpiece Prime from Takara. And here he is in his truck mode. And without further ado, we'll get in close here so we can take a look at the details. We'll start off with the cab section first. You can see a lot of nice silver chrome right up front here for the grill. Front bumper, the headlights as well. You got some transparent plastic there for those lights. And you have some nice transparent blue plastic for the windshields and the windows. Side view mirrors done in chrome. Autobot symbol, chromed out smokestacks. These sections here also chromed, chromed rims. The tires are rubber. And moving down the back section here, so you can take a look at what's going on there. And the back, got the tail lights picked out in paint, some silver as well. And there is the top, there is the bottom. He rolls as rolling things should. Hooray for rolling! And now uh, we'll take a closer look at the trailer itself. You can see this done in kind of a silver ish with the gray stripe going down the side. What about symbol? Some more wheels, some more chrome, some stuff. Tail lights there, done in red. And there's the bottom, you got a little spare tire down there, which is molded in. You do have the little, uh, these little support struts that can come down to hold that up, which is quite nice. And we'll get more into the trailer as we move on. And you can see we now have a new way to connect the trailer, which is just this big square tab, which just plugs in right there. And there you have that, and everything rolls as rolling things should. You do also have a bit of rotation. You can't do sharp turns anymore. You can just do some wide turns, but still, you have some movement there if you need it. And there you have that. And for comparison, here it is with the Magic Square Prime. Here he is with the Transform Element Prime. Here he is with the one that started it all, MP01. You can see how that works out. And here he is with MP10. You can see how those two look side by side. Yeah, on. And last but not least, here he is with G1 Optimus because it's precious. Oh, so precious. So now let's run through the accessories. Oh, the first thing you get are some, uh, you get some little people. You get some little mini figures. The first one here is Spike. And here's little Spike. Where's his little hard hats? And his little shirt. And his little pants. And his little yellow boots. And uh, articulation wise, uh, the head is on a ball joint. You get a little bit of wiggly waggly. The arms are on a ball joint and they come off very easily because these are the tiniest ball joints ever. <laughs> So, the limbs are going to pop off pretty easy. His waist is also on a ball joint. He's got some wiggly waggly as well as some ab crunch. The hips, again, are on a ball joint. So, legs can move forward. They can move back. Uh, outward, eh, not so much. Knees, you get over 90 degrees. And there you go. And just for a comparison, here it is with 
the spike that came with MP10. And here it is with Human Alliance Sam. Just you can get a sense there of the scale of these little guys. They're little guys, just little, little guys. And they do have little magnets on the bottoms of their feet, which we'll show off what that's for in a little bit. We'll just have Spike just standing right there next to Prime. And here we also have Spark Plug with his big old hard hat, his big old belly, his big old legs, and his big old boots. <laughs> And he has the same articulation, ball joints everywhere. That can actually, the spark plug stays together the best. Like I haven't actually had any of his limbs fall off, so he actually stays together the best. But again, just tiny, tiny little ball joints. But there is spark plug, and you also get Carly, who is like the most fragile of them all because her legs just pop off so easily because they're just tiny, tiny ball joints. But here's. Carly, with her yellow hair, she got a little headband on and everything, and her leg warmers. <laughs> and again, same amount of articulation, they all have the same articulation, and again, Carly is just kind of, th th this leg especially just pops off so easily because the tiniest ball joints ever! Anyway, there you have those three right there. And a neat little feature here is you can open up Prime's doors on either side and you can take your little mini figs and they will sit in the cab like so. And you can have them riding around. Yay for rides. And moving along through the accessories, he does include his rifle. You see, it's very G1E primey rifle going on there with some gunmetal gray back there. It looks quite nice. So he has his rifle. He does also include roller. Sorry. <laughs> but here is roller. You can see it's done in gray. So I'm trying to clear it right up front for the headlights there. You can open up the hood. Take a look at his insides. And you do have seats here in Roller himself. You got two seats in the front, two seats in the back, so you can have your minifigs sitting in there if you wish. Transparent red right there as well. And there's the bottom. Again, he rolls as Roller should. Hooray for Rollers. And for a quick comparison, here is MP44's Roller with MP10's Roller. So, there you go. Up next is the Anti-aircraft gun, that's what the instructions call this. You can see, also has rolling wheels. Uh, th these are plastic wheels. These are also plastic wheels, just so you guys know. But it does roll, again, as rolling things should. You can extend on some nice ratchets, as you can see. And you can get some nice full extension here, some nice sturdy ratchets. So you get that movement there. You also get rotation as well. And coming back down, you also get a little claw here, which can rotate here, move up and down, can rotate at this point. You got the claw, the claw! And you can also have it swing underneath, like so. You pretty much do whatever you want there. Uh, you can also open this up and have... One of your minifigs sitting in there as well. You can raise up a little, little satellite dish there. And it even has, just like the G1 toy, it has a little gear right here that you can spin around. So you can have it turning. Yay! <laughs> so, you got that going on there also. So, oh, and one last thing. You do have some guns. I do extend, so you can pew pew bang bang, pew pew bang bang, so you can do all kinds of that. So, there you have that. You also have compatibility between roller and the anti-aircraft gun. One thing you can do is you can flip out this little section right here, and this just slides in like so. And that can rotate, you can have roller towing this around if you wish, and you can have that going on if you want to. Another thing you can do is you can detach this top section here. You just pull this back to unlock it and this will just slide up and you can remove this whole section here and we can slide this back and then we can take 
this section here and rotate it around to reveal those slots. And you can plug this right on here. And now Roller himself can be just totally armed up if you want to. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. And this here will also double as a stand for Prime himself, and we'll get into that a bit later. That's another thing you can do as well. And you can also store Prime's rifle on Roller. Just bring the handle back to reveal this tab, and you can plug that in right back there. And Roller can also carry Prime's rifle if you want to. And also, if you want to, Roller can also tow the trailer. Just bring that down like so, and there you go. Although it does kind of make Roller kind of pop a wheelie. Those front wheels kind of come off the ground, but hey, it's a thing you can do if you want to do it. And some more stuff in our laundry list of accessories here. Here we have the little, uh, little fueling pump here with the rubber hose. It's kind of done in a, it's not black plastic, it's kind of like a, kind of like a charcoal color. You got that going on, and you can give this to Roller as well. You can just plug this onto either side, like so, and do that. There's also a um, a tab here, so you can connect it to either side of this as well for storage. So, hey, things you can do if you want to do it. But you have that going on as well. You do also get some effects parts for some blushing. You can do some blushing. And they're just done in a transparent orange. And you can plug this onto Prime's rifle so you can bloosh. And you can also plug it onto the anti aircraft gun here. Plug in like so. So it can bloosh. So you can do all kinds of blushing. You can do some other blushing too. But we'll get into that a bit later. You also get Prime's Energon Axe. Again, just done in that transclearance orange right there. You do get some optional heads. You get the more uh, rounded off head right here. And we'll get more into this when we get to robot mode. You also get a battle damaged head. And he just looks like he got all kinds of messed up. But you get that as well. You also get a battle damaged waist piece right there you do also get a star scream head and we'll show off what this is for when we get to robot mount yes you get star screams head and you also get his uh shoulder intakes here again we'll show off what that's for in a bit you also get a stand adapter and the last thing is the jetpack, and you can use the effects parts on the jetpack as well. So you can bloosh, you can do all kinds of blooshing with that as well. And since this is a uh, Sideswipe's backpack, uh, guess what? Guess what? You can take it and clip it onto Sideswipe, like so. And there you go. And now Sideswipe can bloosh. So there you have all of the accessories. Now, can you store all of this stuff? Yes, you can, and I'm gonna show you how. Um, one little clever thing that the trailer has is you can slide out this bottom section here, and you have a nice little tray here for storage of your accessories. So these sections right here are for the extra heads. So you just plug those in right up there. You have storage for your heads, and you have these slots right here for the effects parts. And they just go in like that. You have this slot here for the waist piece, and that just tabs in right there, like so. And for the axe, that just plugs in right there. Just holds in via friction sometimes wants to pop out there you go and you can store primes primary accessories here in this nice convenient little tray and you just slide that back in and voila there you have storage for all of that now as far as inside the trailer we'll just bring these down and we can also 
bring these sections out. And this has the same little gimmick that MP10 had where you bring this out and that's a little foot there will lower down, which is quite nice. And we'll just bring these out. And you can, of course, open up the trailer. Yes, your MP cars will still fit in there. And you do have a little ramp that you can bring out. So you have that going on. But we can, of course, crack all of this open. And you can see all of this nice, lovely, lovely detail inside. Quite nice. These little stations here, done in blue. So, nicely done interior there of the trailer. And what we do here is we take the anti-aircraft gun. You want to take these black sections here and flip these down like so, and then the wheels will flip in and lock into place like so, and this will just slot in right there, slide it in, and now that is locked in place. So you got that going on, and then you can take roller, and roller will attach right here, just plugs in right there via those two posts, and you have roller right there. You can take the gun. A couple things you can do with the gun if you want. You can take the gun. It will fold in half like so. And on the cap section here, if you raise this up, there's this little section here. There's this little T-tab right here that will go into this slot right there. So if you want to, you can store the gun on the truck itself. It's a thing you can do if you want to do it. If you don't want Something a little more, uh, a little more elegant looking and not so just, hey, there's a gun on the back of the truck. You can always just open it back up and you can just plug it in right here. If you plug it in up here, it's gonna get in the way of this thing when you're trying to close it. You wanna plug it into this one right there. So we can just plug the gun in like so and voila, everything, get the hose out of the way there. Everything will just, Close up, lock up, and voila, there you have pretty much everything stored. Now, as far as the Starscream bits, the instructions don't say anything about storing this. It doesn't seem like there's any uh, elegant way to store it anywhere on here. You could just always just chuck it in the trailer. Hey, that's the thing you can do if you want. Same thing with the stand adapter. No real elegant place to plug this. Just, you know, if you want to check it in the trailer, just chuck it in the trailer. As far as the uh, the jetpack goes, uh, you can just flip this section down and flip down this tab right here. And you can, if you want, there is a slot right there. You can plug it into the back like that. <laughs> Have a rocket truck going on. Hey, that's a thing you can do if you want to do it. But per the instructions, they want you to plug it in right up here so you can have a rocket trailer. Again, it's, it's not the most elegant storage, but hey, it's a place to plug it if you want to plug it, or again, you can just chuck it in the trailer. But almost all of the accessories do have a place to store them. Now, going back to the minifigs, um, there is a reason why they have little magnets on their feet is because there are some metal plates in the trailer itself, you have these two sections here, which are metal plates. This ramp here is a metal plate. These strips, these two strips on either side are also metal plates. So if you want to, you can just stick your minifigs wherever you want and they're not gonna fall off. They're not gonna go anywhere because they're just stuck there. So you can plug them on there if you want to. And also these sections can fold down. This is for the uh, for the repair bay mode. We'll show, we'll show this off a little bit better later on, but you can pull these down and these also have metal plates on them. So you can take your mini figs and just stand them there like so, and they won't fall off either. So, hey, all things you can do. And as far as the, uh, the anti-aircraft gun goes, we can do kind of the standard primey stuff here with this. We can take this and just rotate it around like so. We want this uh, arm going up over like that and we can just take these panels here and fold them down and then we can close that up make sure that's going to the opening there and you can have it peeking up top like so if you want to so you can pew pew bang bang pew pew bang bang thing you can do if you want to do it 
And also, if you want, you can also have it extended forward, like so, and take these front panels and bring them out, and then you can just have it sticking out the front, like that. So it looks like some kind of weird monster, but hey, hey, all things you can do. If you want to do it, there are a couple other configurations for this. That's in the instructions. Even though I've probably already spent too much time on the trailer, I don't want to spend too much time on the trailer. But hey, things and stuff that you can do. So that is pretty much it for the vehicle mode. So let's get down to the transformation, shall we? I'm not going to try to spin this. I'm just not. No, that, that's just... Just seems all kinds of dangerous. But first thing we're going to do, like in the cartoon, we're going to make the trailer just disappear. And we're going to get down to transforming Prime. So hold on tight, because you're in for a ride. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these side view mirrors and just flip them in. And we're done. No, no, not even close. Not even close to done. But we're going to take these side panels here. And all of this will come undone and come out to the side and this is something we've never seen on a prime before doing that this is this is new these are new things new things happening here so we're going to take this section here and we're going to just rotate this down this section here we're going to flip around like so this panel here is just going to fold up like that and then all of this will just rotate around like so this red panel here and blue panel We'll just come back like that. And this is on a double hinge, so you're going to bend it back and to this joint right here against what will be his leg, like so. And there you go. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just undo all of this. On top, on top. Clips in a couple places here. Just bring that back, like so. Rotate this down. Bring this around. Flip this up. Rotate, back, back, and back, like so. So now we're going to transform his legs. So you want to split the legs like so. Just bring him out a couple clicks so he got some room to operate. We're going to take this whole assembly here, and all of this will come out like that. You want to come here to this little section here, and this will just rotate up like so. So you want it like that. And once you've done that, you're going to rotate this entire assembly around. This will come around, and then this will stay here, and the rest of it will come and meet it right at the top, and just plug in right there, like so. Once you've done that, you take this section here, bring that back. This little panel here, you just straighten that up, bring this section down, bring this forward. That will peg in right there, like so. And we can just leave that alone for now. And now we can just kind of raise this up a little bit, take the section, rotate this around, and just extend the leg on this double joint here. You want to come here, there's a little panel that you want to flip down, and then we just bring this up, and this will tab in right here to the side of the leg. You bring this section up, this entire assembly here is on a big double hinge that will just come up like so. And then you just, as usual, cat hair not included, get out of here! And we just bring all of this up and in. Oops. Wait. There we go. And we just bring all of this up. Make sure that stays together. And this will just tab in. Oops. Lined up, and everything will just tab in on the front, tab in back here, and then we just take this panel here. It helps if you push this section in with your thumb, so let's push that in and then push this over. That'll lock in right there. And now we're going to move on to the foot. So you take the section, bring that down. This little panel here will come out. You bring this out, rotate that in to make its heel, bring that back, and there you have. Hey, leg, all done. Second boss is just like the first. And there you have the legs all done. Hooray for legs. So you want to come back here to this blue section, and this one just flip down. That will just flip down like so. And we're pretty much done back here for now. So now let's work on the front section here. So you want to take this panel. You want to 
raise this up and then you want to just grab this whole front grill assembly here and just give it a tug and bring it up like so. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take these side sections here, flip that in, take this little bit here and that will come up like so. Same thing on the other side, just bring that in, flip that up like so. And then take these sections of the bumper, flip them in, and then bring all of this up like that. And once you have that done, we're going to just grab the arms here, just pull them out, and they will extend out on this armature right here. The arms are on an armature, go figure. Bring that out and just kind of extend them out like so. You can take these sections here, these come up on a double hinge like that. And once we've done that, we want to take these sections here, the windshields, open them up. And now we are going to come, stay, there we go. We're gonna come to this section right here. Now these sections are tabbed in in here, so you want to grab this and just kind of pull it up a little bit, just kind of give it a little wiggle waggle wiggle waggle, wiggle waggle wiggle waggle, and that will pop up. You can see a little slot tabs in there. So just kind of wiggle waggle wiggle waggle, bring those up like so. You can unhook this whole section here like that. And also bring this back, you can take this, bring this back. That'll give you a little bit more leeway here on all of this because you need it. And then we just take this section here. Here's the matrix chamber. Just bring that forward, bring all that down. This little blue piece, just collapse that down like that. And what we're doing here is we're going to take the wheel and this will push down like so. You rotate it in and then you take this section, bring it up and slide it in. Same thing on the other side, just push the wheel down, flip it in, and I bump the camera, sorry, and then just rotate this, slide it in, like so. Now, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire assembly here, we're going to rotate all this around, all of this will come around like so, bring it all down, bring it all down, now we'll come down. You want to kind of raise his head up a little bit here and that section right there will just clip in like so. You want to take this panel here and just bring that down. These panels here will come up and over like that. Take the windshields, they're going to rotate around like so to give him his more cartoon accurate chest. And at this point now, we can take these sections and they will just raise up, tuck under his arms, there's a little tab in there too, I'll just kind of thoop into place. And bring that up, and thoop, right there. And then we can just bring the section up with the matrix chamber, that will just pop right into his chest, close up his chest, like so. And bring this panel out and just bring this down. Oops, okay. Because I have everything not properly oriented here. First thing we gotta do before we do all this is we have to bring the legs down. Then we bring these side script sections around, around, bring down his butt plates. And we can bring all this back and now we have this where we need it to go. So we can go where it needs to go. Now this can come up like so. And this will just clip in, boop, right there, like that. And then we just bring the body down, push it down, that will snap into place. And there we go, he's coming together. We have reached the home stretch. And now, for the arms, what we are going to do here is, we're going to extend the arm right here at the bicep. This little panel here will come up like so. Then we just take the fist and this panel here, all that will just swing around, come around, tab in right there, rotate the hand around, that's a little squeaky. 
And then we bring this panel down, bring this in. There's a little hook there. I'll just clip in right there, secure all that in place. Bring that down and then you just take the whole shoulder assembly here, just push that into the body and the smokestack here just pushes in like so, so it's centered. And there you have an arm all done. Second verse, same as the first. And now he has two arms. Hooray for arms. And I think we're done. Are we done? Yes, we're done. Woo, we're done. And there you have Prime in his robot mode. And a very good looking, very cartoony Prime. I do quite dig the look of him very much. I like this guy. I like him. So let's get in close here so we can take a look not at his belly. At that head sculpt. There it is. You can see. Very, very nicely done head sculpt. Nice blue there for the eyes. You got gray there for the mouth plate. Gray for the head crest. And his little his little horns are a little bit warped out of the box here. You see they kind of curve in a little bit. But that's okay. Not the end of the world. But all oh, though, looks quite nice. A nice chromed stomach grill. I do have a little little bit of chip, a little bit of paint chipping there on the yellow. I don't know if I did that or that came like that out of the box. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm messing with this guy so much. I don't know what's what anymore. But moving down the legs, you can see. Very nicely done. A little bit of gray there for the toes. You can see the back. Not too shabby. Oh, I wish there was something to kind of cover up that there, but. Oh no, not too bad. He does have a big backpack going on there. But oh no, not too bad in my opinion. Now articulation wise, the head is on a ball joint. You do have your wiggly waggly, wiggly waggly. He can totally look up and squirrel, do all that. Head can rotate. You also have that hinge right there that allows him to kind of move his head even further down if you need it to. Uh, the arms. Can rotate, can move in and out. You get some outward movement here as well as there. So you got that going on. You got bicep rotation. You have over 90 degrees of a bend there at the elbow. As far as the hands go, you can rotate. Kind of squeaky, but you got wrist rotation. The hands are poseable and the fingers are quite, quite snug on mine. Jeez, there we go. The thumb is just on a hinge at the base, and the index finger is on a hinge at the base as well as a hinge in the middle, and the other three fingers are just one piece there with a hinge there and a hinge there. And as far as the waist, you do get some waist rotation if you unlock this back section here. He does have an ab crunch that engages right there, and that gives you... A little bit more waist articulation there, as well as that crunch. You even get some side-to-side -side movement as well. And then you just push down the back, and that will just clip back into place. I really like how the hips work. Usually, with primes, this panel is just on a hinge, and it'll just flip up. But on this one, once you get the hip to a certain point, that panel will actually just sink into the body and just completely get out of the way. And I love how that works, and then it just comes right back to you. I like that. And the funny thing too is that this little side skirt here, as you move it up, it will just kind of push it out of the way. That's pretty cool. So legs can move forward that far. You can do the big boot. You can move back. You can move the butt plate out of the way. You can move back pretty much all the way back. Outward. We can do the full splits. You get thigh rotation. And now let's talk about the knees because people have been having problems with his knees. He does have a double jointed knee, but the way Takara designed this, it designed it to work in a very specific way. So how the knee is supposed to work is you're supposed to move the top joint first before you move the bottom joints. Okay, we're gonna go through this. So I have not broken the knees on mine, thank God, um, because I do, I, I know how it works, so I know what to kind of look out for. So basically what's happening here is you have this little, this little like L-shaped tab right here. What happens is when you bend the top joint, this is eventually going to go into this little notch right in there. I'm showing it on this side so you can see it the best. So basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bring that first joint up first, the top joint up first, 
And once you get to the point where that little L-tab is right above that notch, what I do just because, like, I'm just afraid now of breaking his knees. So what I do is I just put my thumb there, and I just kind of guide that, that tab in there. And you can see now, I don't know how well, but you can see that blue tab is now in that notch. And from there, you now have the rest of your movement, and you get a full knee bend there. So click, 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 clicks, lots of clicking. So that is how you get the knee to work. You just want to engage that first joint first until you get the blue tab where it's supposed to go, and then it goes in, blah, 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 and there you go. And I'm honestly afraid to, to move the knee without actually making sure it goes in because I'm just afraid now. But, hey, it, it does work the way it's supposed to. I don't know, you know, again, it... it it could be part QC that people are breaking the knees, and it could just be part user error. I don't know, but so far, I haven't broken the knees on mine, thank God, so. Anyway, yeah, you know, as far as, as far as the knees go, I think Takara, I, I think Takara just got, just got too fancy with the knees instead of just making it just a regular double-jointed knee, like, they should have just made it a regular double-jointed knee and let us decide how we're going to move the joints instead of them deciding for us. I think that, just a boner. I think it got too fancy with something that should have been really, really simple. But anyway. And also, this little knee pad here is on a hinge. So you can kind of slide that up, slide that down as you need to. And as far as the feet go, they can move up. They can move down. And you do have full tiltage. And you can also bring that heel piece down if you need it to support any poses. And just to touch on the shoulder joint a little bit more, because I forgot one extra point of articulation here, is you can pull that shoulder out so he can cross his arms in front of his chest. So, hey, that's a thing you can do also. And, of course, we can give him his weapons. We can give him his rifle here. And it's the typical tab in the slot of the palm method of weapon holding. And, again, the fingers on mine are quite stiff there. And you can just plug that into his hand like so, wrap his fingers around it, and he has a pretty good grip on that, so you can pew pew bang bang, pew pew bang bang, or if you want, you can plug the effects part in there as well and have him bloosh, he can totally bloosh, he can totally bloosh. And if you want to store it, you can store it on his back, you have these two tabs right here, it's on either side, so you can plug it onto either side of the backpack here, and it just tabs in like so. You can have that stored on his back if you wish, or if you want to, you can use the truck mode storage. Just flip this back, fold this in half, and you can flip up this section here, and you can have it hanging off his butt if you want to. Hey, that's a way to store it if you want to store it. So, hey, things you can do if you want to do it. We can also give him his axe, and to do that, we just pull off his hand. His hand is just on a uh, on a clip here. So you just unclip his hand, and then the axe will clip on in its place, like so. And you can just rotate it. There you go. He's got his axe. You can plug it onto either hand. So he has his Energon axe. So you can do that if you want. And if you want, you can also give him the jetpack. It just hooks right over this section right here, just bring it down, and that will just clip right into place, like so. So there he is with the jetpack, and you can take the effects parts and plug them in there, like so, so we can bloosh! And this is where we bring in the anti-aircraft gun, because as I mentioned earlier, you can use this as a stand for prime, so you just want to flatten the wheels out, you want to remove the top section here, and what's going to happen is this section right here is going to slide up into these grooves here on either side of Prime's Botox. And you just slide that up like so. And this section is on a hinge and there is a lock for it. It's not a dead solid lock. This could have been a bit better. But if you do it just right, you can get kind of sort of nice little blushing flying pose if you want to. Hey, thing you can do if you want to do it. Now, if you don't want to use the anti-aircraft gun as a flight stand, you do get this adapter here, and this is for the stand that came with Masterpiece Dinobot. So if you got Dinobots and you have this stand, you can 
just plug this on here like so and this works the same way just slides up Prime's Butox and you can use that for your flight stand if you wish so you have options and as always options are good so now let's get into the optional heads as I showed earlier you get the more rounded off head which is also nice also very cartoony both heads are accurate and to swap the faces you just want to slide the head forward like so and then slide the new head back on like so so now you can have that look going on if you want to and again his ears are a little they're a little warped you could probably fix that but you got that look going on if you want to or if you don't want that look going on you can have him all battle damage you can take the battle damage head and slide that on like so and that he just had a bad day he just had a really really bad day and use the battle damaged waist piece here and how that works is there's just a tab and it just tabs right into the slot right here on the side just plugs right in and there you go he's beaten up he's got a piece he's got a chunk taken out of him he's not having a good day ow ow poor prime and the last thing you can do is you can turn Prime into a uh, into Starscream. So <laughs> we can slide this head off, and we get the Starscream head. You can plug that on, and you take the shoulder intakes here. You want to undo his uh, his backpack here, and this will just slide over this section here like that. Then you just clip this back on like so and now you can recreate that one scene from that one episode in the movie where they were masquerading around as the autobots so you can do that if you want hey why not dare i say why not and of course what is a prime without his matrix you can open up his chest here and we have the matrix chamber inside you just raise this panel and there you have the matrix of leadership. We can uh, kind of pull this out a bit so you can get it out a little bit easier. But there you have the matrix. It is die cast. See, done in a nice silver chrome with some orange. The center part done in a nice metallic paint. And just for comparison, here it is with MP10's matrix. And they are pretty much the exact same size, so this will actually fit in MP44, so if you want to swap matrixes, you can totally do that, it's a thing you can do if you want to do it, but there you have the matrix till all are one. And the last thing to show off on this guy is the electronics, yes he talks, he says things and stuff, so it's all in the backpack here, uh, just to show you where the batteries go, uh, the batteries go right in here you see this little screw here you open it up it takes uh three lr44s which are not included you have to get those yourself and you just pop those in and your on off switch is right here so we're going to turn it on and we're going to get going with the noises now just to preface and to ask for some help here um i did not have time to get translations i'm really sorry i did not have time to get translations i've been super busy um he says a lot of stuff in japanese so if anybody who is watching this speaks the language and can translate what he's saying by all means please write it down in the comment section and i'll pin it so everybody can see it and you will be forever revered as a god so <laughs> i would appreciate it very much so sorry again i just didn't have the time but we're gonna go through the noises here he says a lot so let's get down to it so push the button well i knew what that meant <laughs> Transform, start your engines. I, I understood that. He said that in English. I think that's pretty much it there. I think that's pretty much it there. So now when we hold the button down, we're now in another mode and he's going to say more stuff. We are laughing. Yeah. 
<laughs> and he just screams. We are laughing. <laughs> I love that one. Okay, we're gonna move on, so hold the button down again. And now we're in another mode, and he's gonna say more stuff. Move on, so hold it down again. And he's gonna say more stuff. Okay, we're gonna move on, so hold it down again. And he says more stuff. On. Hold it down again. And he says more stuff. And yep. And yes, there are Peter Cullen clips in here, which is awesome. So really cool that they included Peter Cullen clips in here. That's awesome. And hold it down one more time. And you get a little music clip there from the show. So there you go. And that is pretty much it there. And now for comparison. Here he is with the Magic Square Prime. Here he is with, I think, his main competition here, the Transform Elements Prime. Here he is with MP01. Here he is with MP10. And here he is with G1 Prime because he's precious! Oh, so precious. And last but not least, here he is with Masterpiece Megatron. And they look quite, quite good together. So, there you go! So there you have MP44. And man, this was an adventure, wasn't it? Whew. So let's just get right down to the million dollar question. Is this worth the price of admission? Well, here's the thing. Value is in the eye of the beholder. Um, if you feel this is worth the price, then it is. If you don't feel it's worth the price, then it's not. Simple as that. It is not my place to tell you what your sense of value is. Now, do I personally feel this is worth the price? Um, 
Yes and no. Um, yes, because, you know, when you open up the box and you see just how much you get in this set, just how involved the figure is, you get electronics, diecast, ton of accessories, ton of moving parts, you can see where the money's going. So, in, in that respect, yes, definitely worth the price. I do feel like you're getting a good bang for your buck with everything you're getting in this set. Now, for me, I don't feel like it's worth it because 99% of his accessories are going to go back in the box and they're going to be sitting in the closet and never see daylight again. So, <laughs> there's that part of me that goes, wow, I spent $400 for a robot and a gun because that's all that's going to be on the shelf. The rest of it's going to be in the closet. So, in that respect, for me, not so much worth it. But hey, it is what it is. If they could have just sold me the robot and the gun for like 150 bucks, I would have been just as happy. But eh, it is what it is. Now, as far as the issues that people have been reporting about this figure, the main one being the uh, the lower joint in that double jointed knee. Um, like I said earlier, I think Takara was just getting too fancy with that knee joint and it really just should have been a standard double knee and let us decide how we use those joints as opposed to them telling us how to use them and basically making us use them the way they want us to use them. I don't think that was a good idea, but hey, it is what it is. As far as people breaking the knees, you know, like I said earlier, I don't know how much of that is actual QC or how much of that is just user error and people not using the knees the way you were supposed to. I don't know. I've had no problem with mine. Um, you know, the knees are still in one piece, you know, I just, I know how the joint works and I know how to, you know, manipulate them to get them to do what I need them to do. And I just exercise just a little, you don't have to exercise a lot of caution, just a little bit of caution. But yeah, at the end of the day, it should have just been just a standard double-jointed knee. But yeah, again, it is what it is. For some people, there have been reports of the voice box not working. They hold the button down, it makes a transformation noise, and then it won't play the voice clips. And that definitely sucks. And I know when you pay a lot of money for something and it has problems, it can be frustrating, infuriating. I understand. I understand completely. I've been in that position many a time, so I understand totally. But unfortunately, and, and somebody in the TFW thread put this perfectly, and I totally agree because it is the honest to God truth. Unfortunately, there isn't a price point where QC problems stop happening. And that's the honest to God truth. That's just reality. That's just the reality of being a consumer. No matter what you buy, you run the risk of getting the bad one. And I've gotten the bad one quite a few times, as I'm sure you have, as I'm sure everyone has. That's just the reality of being a consumer. What you pay at checkout isn't going to change that, unfortunately. Now back to the figure itself, um, I think this is honestly a really nicely done figure. I think this is a worthy successor to MP10 in my opinion. Um, the transformation is crazy, but it's not, you know, it's, it's an involved transformation. There are a lot of steps, but it does work. It does work pretty smoothly. It's not... The, the, the complicated transformations that I don't like is where you just have pieces flopping around and it's fighting you every step of the way. Those are the complicated transformations I don't like. This definitely doesn't do any of that. Everything, you know, has nice stiff joints so you can move things out of the way and they stay out of the way while you're working on something else and everything does work as it should. While it is an involved transformation, it doesn't feel like a chore. Like, after I got done transforming him, I wasn't like, oh, thank God that's over, you know. I was I actually felt satisfied, like I accomplished something, you know. So, yeah, as far as the transformation goes, I, I do feel like it works well, despite it being such an involved transformation. And like I said, I feel this is a worthy successor to MP10. He's definitely going to be taking the place of my MP10. Um, also, because it's about time my MP10 retired, because mine's is just literally falling apart anyway. So, it's time my MP10 retired. But me personally, I love the cartoony look, so this for me is just ticking all the boxes, and I absolutely love this figure. But of course, that is just one man's opinion, so there you go. Now I pick this up from Robot Kingdom, but you can also pick up Masterpiece Toys from BigBadToysStore.com. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check them out. You can also check out my Masterpiece Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Takara MP44 Masterpiece Optimus Prime version 3.0. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be proud. Boom in your face. Megatron, I know exactly what it's going to take to banish you for good. Huh?
<laughs> really? <laughs> uh, really? What, what, what exactly is that, Prime? I know your secret. What, what, what secret? You know the secret. You, you, you know about, I mean, you, you, you know? Yeah, I know. Now, you know what? You know what? Maybe me and my Decepticons can just go somewhere else. You know, I'm sure there are plenty of planets. Plenty of planets to conquer. You know, we'll just... Well, well, we'll just go. Yeah, I'll see you later. Been nice knowing you. Ha! That was almost too easy. Ah! So was that.